Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 259R. We're reviewing the lesson that we um, started <coughs> on Friday. We're continuing with the principle, Altered Empire, how conditions are going to change in the earth in the very near future. We talked about the prevalence of spirits and how they affect life in the unseen realm, in the spiritual realm, and life here in the physical realm. <clears throat> we were speaking about a principle which teaches that spirits manifest conditions. We were giving some examples of a condition in which a spirit is attributed. Turn to Numbers, the 14th chapter, verse 22 to 24. Here, we have the example of Israel having the opportunity to go into the Promised Land and uh, basically reaching a stage where they disqualify themselves. Numbers 14, to 24. Now, YHVH pronounces as a sentence upon Israel, excluding them from entering into the land because of their <coughs> unwillingness to pursue faith in him. Verse 22, Because all these men, which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt, and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and had followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess it. So we see it's attributed to the influence of spirits. The ten spies that went in and saw the land were motivated, influenced by what would be called a spirit of fear condition of fearfulness prevented them from progressing into what could have been a paradise a radical change in their lifestyle and they chose not to take advantage of it Caleb was influenced by a spirit of boldness in which he kept trying to urge them to go forward. We can take the land. We can take down these giants. God will be with us. So we see an example of influence in everyday activities. People are under the influence of spirits consistently. So the spirit of boldness is considered good. Most definitely. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's where he gets his faith from. Let's go on. Scripture indicates the spirit is named after its condition, what it is and what it does. 1 Kings 22, verses 19 to 22.
here we have the prophet Micaiah being called to <clears throat> give a rendering of things that are going to take place dealing with King Ahab. Verse 19, he said, Hear therefore, hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. The Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? One said on this manner, another said on that manner. So what we find is a judgment is going to fall on King Ahab because of his transgressions. And uh, this is why it's VH, of course, is trying to determine the best way to have this judgment proceed. Verse 21, And there came forth a spirit. Now this says a spirit, not an angel, but a spirit. And stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. <clears throat> this is an example of what we have today. Our leaders, movers and shakers of society are all under the influence of a lying spirit. Yes. Adam Schiff starts dictating what he heard President Trump say on, on his dissertation. The thing of it is, is everybody knows that he was lying. So you know, and he perpetuated over and over and over this lie and continued lying, even though he, everybody knows he's a liar, but he can't stop lying continuously. And that's, he's obviously under the spirit of a Certainly lying spirit. Certainly is. Mm. he believes his lie? <clears throat> he doesn't believe it. He's just lying because he's given the public something to consider as the possibility of, of, uh, of wow. an irrational point of view about what joint... Uh, Mr. Trump was doing. It's a yielded vessel. Yes, it's not Schiff. It's, it's the spirit, spirit behind him. So let me ask this question. In verse 22 specifically, is the character of this spirit to be a lying spirit, or can he decide to be a lying spirit? He's decided to be a lying spirit. So what would his default character be? Whatever he chooses. His default character? Yeah. Yeah, no, you know, Any, just saying, anything, what is he normally? What yes. is he, he's, he, he, he is whatever he chooses to okay. be. Mm. But so he's they, a spirit of the Lord. Yeah. But he had a will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He volunteered to go and do this. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing a minion being directed by whoever is higher than the dominion. You go here, you go there. Okay. So they're not really pro or against anything until they have been directed to do thus and so. Unless they're fallen. Hmm. Unless they're fallen? Unless they're fallen. Yeah. If they're fallen, they cannot do any good. Right. Everything is evil. But we're understanding that if they're not fallen, they can do good or evil. Depends on the spirit. Hmm. Each one is unique, as we will see as we go okay. further into this. What we're seeing here is exactly what's happening in society the human race has been and is under the influence of spirits. They think that they're making an objective decision, not knowing that their whole life is just a crafting of spirits, influences. Let's go on. <clears throat> Isaiah 4, 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof, 
by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Or burning there means basically consumption. In this text right here? Mm -hmm. Consumption. Yes. What it means basically is conditions that these spirits are going to manifest in the lives of people. The spirit of consumption is a spirit that consumes <clears throat> all your efforts. Okay. Nothing works <clears throat> out. Your life becomes a wasteland. And God is doing this because the person has brought upon himself a judgment. Okay. And that judgment will consume him off the earth, ultimately, unless he turns and repents. I was thinking of the uh, medical condition consumption. Well, that's a physical aspect of it. Okay. <clears throat> but in the spiritual, the, the influence works off of the spirit's motives, drives, intentions. The desire to achieve a certain thing will never manifest. Mm -hmm. It's going to not reach what it was intended to do. And you see people living their lives right. in vain. Spirit of consumption. So that's de de devouring. Yes. So, Mr. Jones, what I'm seeing is a group of, let's say, they're minions again. Minions who stand around waiting for something to do. And they notice there's a situation that's a, a, a conversational piece, and they volunteer themselves to further whatever the cause is, whatever cause they, they uh, they decide to join in on. Not necessarily been created for that, but see an opportunity to do it, so they offer their services. Yes. Like, yes. That's, that's an aspect of it, just like the humans. People drift from one thing to another. They're drawn into whatever it is that excites them, or whatever it is. Spirits feed off of energy. When you're gonna mob, and uh, people know how to motivate mobs and they stir them up like the mullahs stir up the uh, crowds yes. of Islamics mm -hmm. to incite them to Absolutely. a fury. Incitation. Yes. Can the same spirit do both good and evil? No. No. Good. So if you sided with the devil, you can't go do anything for Wedge for Itch. No. Okay. The only thing you can do, what Wide's VH does, is to take that spirit and use it as a spirit of judgment, send him out to right. perform uh, right. a destruction, because right. it cannot do good. Is the implication here that the spirit's motivation for offering to be a lying spirit is because he will feed off of certain energy? Sure. That's, that's the only reason sure. he's doing it. Sure. Hmm. People don't understand that what we have with White, especially in White's Vietra's case was he was an umbrella over his people. Right. When they transgressed, all he had to do was turn it, lift the umbrella up and the pack would just be free to ravage the human race or the, the nation of Israel. The scripture indicates these spirits answer to the commands of those beings in authority. They're directed by superior intelligences. Malachi, third chapter, verse 11. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast the fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So you have a spirit that devours, consumes yeah. life of uh, <coughs> the earth. This is the same one that you were talking about, the consumption spirit. No. This is a, a different spirit who operates on a similar basis. You have the devourer, you have a spirit called the waster. Right. These are different spirits that are sent forth and they destroy in similar ways. 
purely because they want to feed on the energy. Sure. Okay. But the principle is that they are under control. Wife's VH has control over right. all of them and the lesser angelic beings too. To more or less degree. Depends upon the... the uh, <sighs> It depends upon the character of the spirit and the type of the spirit. There's some spirits that have a higher dominion in angels, hmm. which only Elohim can dominate. Hmm. Hmm. So, Jonesy, why is that? Why are there lower for life forms that are above angels? No, they're not lower. They come from prior creation when we talked about that some first. time before. Yeah. Okay. Should we understand that all pre creation spirits have a higher dominion? No. Just some. Some it depends on the, the character the of the price. spirit. Okay. Its place in the creation and the angelic creation, the character of the angelic intelligence. Okay. Are they given a will as well? Yes, they all have will. So they get, to, they get to choose. To a certain degree, but they're motivated by... Remember, we said that they are called by the characteristic. Okay. So if you have the devourer, he's going to be motivated by okay. consumption. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> well, let's go on. <coughs> Revelation 7, verse 1. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. Now these four winds are not to be confused with the four spirits that we read about in Zechariah. The four spirits dominate the whole heavens. These, the word is different. <coughs> the, the, the four spirits are called Ruach. These have a different name, and they're referring to literally wind, air. And they're basically involved in the earth, its environment, and the conditions of it. They're spirits under the control of angels. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor any tree. <clears throat> so we see angelic beings in control over spirits. Now these are not necessarily high, all, uh, high or ordained angels. These are regular, everyday angels, but they are given ability to dominate these spirits. And they can loose them or they can restrict them. Mm. Which misses the next principle. Scripture teaches humans, too, can bring about conditions in which they can secure the service of spirits. This is where magic and sorcery mm. comes in. Exodus, the seventh chapter, verses 10 to 11. <clears throat> And Moses and Aaron went in unto Pharaoh, and they did so as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron cast down his rod before Pharaoh and before his servants and became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers and the magicians of Egypt. They also did in like manner with their enchantments, incantations. They used sorcery to do the same thing that Moses and Aaron were doing <coughs> through the power of YHVH. Is the speaking of the incantation the control mechanism? Mm-hmm. Setting things in motion. Connecting with certain spirits to do service <coughs> for the individual. What I'm trying to get at is, can anybody just say those words and bam, the same thing happens? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the art of magic. You learn how to set things in motion in the spiritual realm. Mm -hmm. It's 
dangerous and foolish for a human to get involved with something like that. Right. Because that individual is putting himself in bondage. Yeah, you can control certain spirits. Right. But when you do that, you got higher individuals that control, are controlling exactly. you. So the end result is always going to be control over you. Certainly. Yeah. More than that, I believe you open a window in your own life to those spirits. Sure. And so now, because you've, you've made the contact, so now they have a way to come in and influence your life. That's what we're saying. The individual thinks that he's doing something beneficial and he's getting power, but all he's doing is opening himself up to control, to be controlled and influenced by higher order beings that he can't deal with. At what point is the soul of that person sold or lost and when and he given makes over, contact from the me. moment of contact there's not a later stage no, where there's some kind of agreement no, or you're, no right. uh -uh. we are property and to whom we yield to is who is our controller mm -hmm. so if you're a good person and you keep yielding to jesus you're going to have protection if jesus is the god that you choose to serve and are in your mind but if you don't then you're you're serving satan at some well, level. If you dabble in like horoscope and stuff like that. Yep. That's, that's you put yourself in contact okay. with spirits. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the next. So I'm going to drop over some because there's a principle I want you to understand. Okay. Scripture indicates the human race is under the influence of a spirit called the spirit of error. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Turn to 1 John, 4th chapter. Verse 6. <laughs> we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. You have two spirits here. The spirit of truth is, of course, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The spirit of error. The word error there comes from a Greek term planeo, which <coughs> means literally deception. Mm -hmm. So what it's called is a spirit of deception. Two words. Planeo and plane. Plane is the noun. It's the condition of being deceived. Planeo is the verb. It's the condition of entering into deception. Mm -hmm. Can it be said one is truth and one is anti truth? <clears throat> what it means <clears throat> it's talking about the same thing it's talking about you coming in contact with the reality the surreality of deception <clears throat> and then coming under the total condition you are now in the condition of deception but he's talking about the two different spirits one of truth and one of error one is truth and one is anti-truth <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah, when we're talking about, if you're talking about what we first discussed, yes. the spirit of truth, the spirit of error, mm -hmm. I said there's two different spirits. One's right. the Holy Spirit, one is a spirit of deception. Right. One is, I'm, I'm trying to make it clear that one is diametrically opposed to, to one the other. So yes. one is this, one is that. So yes. truth and then anti-truth is, is the way yes. I'm seeing it. But yes. Are you calling the spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Holy Spirit. All right. <clears throat> now you have other <clears throat> lesser spirits that are of truth right. because they come from God. Okay. I just to say but okay. Jesus talks about the source of truth. When he, the spirit of truth, comes, he'll do this, he'll do that, he'll do the other. He is truth absolute, the highest order of truth. He is the, the source. Right. From which all everything truth else comes, comes from. So we should understand, therefore, that the spirit of truth is one of the seven aspects, one of the seven spirits before the throne. Do you know what I'm talking about? You're talking about characteristic. Okay, but this is a, a, a being. This is God. 
God has many names. The Holy Spirit okay, is the spirit of that. truth, third okay. person of the Trinity. Okay. Now, Another name for the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. truth yes. Okay, I've got it. Yes. Took a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for asking that because it cleared something up for me. What we're looking at is the source of conditions on the earth. People think that things are just happenstance right. here. Right. There's no rhyme or reason. The scripture pulls the veil back and lets us know what the source of everything that man is encountering is. It has to do with the uh, objective effect of a spirit being or an angelic fallen being. There are no incidental accidents here. Everything is determined, everything is set in motion right. from a predetermined source. So it should be clear from what you just said that the most misunderstood and misused and abused word in the English language is coincidental. Yeah, yeah. Because it doesn't exist. There's no it? coincidences, yeah. no. We want to take a look at the influence of this spirit of error, the spirit of deception. Turn to, <coughs> <coughs> well, the principle is scripture indicates the spirit operates in several ways. The main way is through men speaking error and being believed by the hearers. Mm. First John, fourth chapter, verse one. Okay. <clears throat> Beloved, believe not every spirit but try the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets are gone out into the world so he's talking about everybody that puts himself in a position of speaking the word of God is speaking from a spirit either that spirit is of God or it is not it's a false spirit and when that person speaks he's affecting people either for God or for the fallen intelligence that's behind them. Turn Ephesians. So the, Lord, so the word that comes out of your mouth has a power of its own. The word, yes, the word that comes out of, your, out of everybody's mouth mm -hmm. is a spirit is behind that word. Mm. Okay. Very interesting. You get your inspiration from a spirit. Mm -hmm. Man is not capable of inspiring <laughs> himself. <laughs> he is being inspired either by a spirit of God or by a spirit of the Luciferians, darkness, fallen intelligences. Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verse 14. Yes. That we be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Yes. Same word, planeo. Yes. The verb, they're speaking, and as they speak, people are being put into a condition of deception. So just hearing this word, which is inspired or driven by a spirit, the spirit, the plate, the plane, you come under a spell, essentially. Yes. I mean, that's, there's no other way of yes. describing it. Yes. If we had time, well, when we go, we meet Tuesday. Okay. I'm going to show you that <clears throat> the whole organized church is under that, an yes. illusion. Yes. <laughs> 